Hello folks, welcome back to the channel, Farmer Info Extreme here. Here we're looking at all the new bosses dropped today on Tuesday the 24th of September 2024. As always, time has to be down below and we got some banger mods to look at today, including the new Gleaner that is finally out. Got a, technically it's a Ford, but it's a Lizard brand. And as well as we've got some other awesome bits of equipment, including a very cheap and effective herbicide production and the fertilizer production. But anyways, let's get on with our new moss for today. Starting off with the undergrowth decorations, this is by Alessandro DE, 4.92 megabytes to download. Slot camps is 1 to 3 slots for the smaller individual items. For the larger groups and that, so these ones over here, these are 12 and 16 slots respectively. And yeah, it's in name, so it's a decorative item, so go to your decorati decorations. Go under to others. And yeah, what this is, it's basically just a little bit to add a bit of texture that to your map and that, to your farm and that, so things like stones on your paths and that, bits of leaves and that. So go from left to right, we got big branches A, big branches B, small branches, dry branches, big stones A, big stones B, small stones, cover foliage, brambles. Ferns, small ferns, sting nettles. Actually, yeah, that is something like you'll see proper here in Britain. In that, not sure if you get across the states in that. But anyways, also you got the Shantara mushrooms. Oh, this is mushrooms. Oh, we have magic mushrooms, white tip mushrooms, fly cap mushrooms, poplar leaves, elm leaves, maple leaves, undergrowth A and undergrowth B, so these are your larger sections of the, basically, what it is, is just all that we've seen added up together, so, see it up and close and personal, I do like that, especially the stones and that, I absolutely love, the sting nettles, yeah, that is a very familiar pain in the ass at home in that, and you also got your little mushrooms in that, are there any magic mushrooms, <laughs> nope, don't do drugs, kids. But yeah, it's just like little bits like add so much characters to your map and that. And yeah, if you feel a little garden area now, you put some of these undergrowth groups down. But yeah, so that is the undergrowth decorations by Alessandro DE. Next, now for the woodcut sand. This is by Cyanic. 1.07 meg was download, and this is a decorative item. And it's a woodcut sand. Terms with slot counts. The slot count is three slots, goes down to one. So yeah, it comes up under decorations, so 250 to purchase. So go into your decorations once again, under to other. So basically where we just looked at towards the end. And yeah, 250, three slots, goes down to one. But yeah, I thought, you know, get a bit of testing going on here. So I've got a six meter log. So thinking something like that. Okay, helps if you actually balance it. But yeah, this is mainly for, you know, cut up winter logs and that. Bit of, oof. Uh, close enough, that'll do. Just got off the ends. Yeah, can I try to get this balanced? Yeah, it's sort of semi what's going balanced, but mainly a bit of tweaking that. There we go, that's better. Actually, yeah, that looks quite good now, you know, with wooden that. Then get your chainsaw and axe. And there we go, you cut out your firewood. There we go. Now you got a little logs and that for your firewood and that to keep your fire going in the winter and that. But yeah, this, at the end of the day, it's a decorative item. It does have some actual useful functionalities, but. Yeah, quite limited usage, especially when it comes to the size of the log. So basically, anything that's small, not chunky, but big enough to go onto the stands. So yeah, this is 2.3 meters, and it just goes over the edge. So I think that's what a one and a half meter width. Actually, I can find out now. So if we go get a chainsaw, cut you off, and cut this off here. There we go. Close enough. Oh, 1.2, so yeah, just over a meter and that, so not too bad. 
overall, not too bad of an item. Definitely good for all things like role playing in that. But anyways, that is the woodcut stand by Sionic. Next. Now for the old well, this is by Barney. 9.05 megabytes to download. Terms of slot counts is 5 goes down to 1. And you can find this under containers, as I mentioned. 1,500 to buy. This mod is an add-on well that gives you water, so basically fresh ground water. So first of all, I want to see, is it free water or you got to pay for it? Alright, you got to pay for it, but how much does like a thousand litres cost? So, we go up to 1,100. There we go, that was about a thousand litres, so 20 quid for that, so... Or 20 bucks, whatever, so overall, actually not bad, because... Sometimes for like a thousand litres of water, it'll charge you like a hundred quid. Again, it depends on what mod you're using, some mods will give you free water. And that is a base game, Abbey 550, so... Yeah, it may not be the most fastest with filling up, but at the end of the day, it has some bit of functionality, and... And a bit of an aesthetic piece as well, so... Now you can see the well into the ground. Actually, it does look very nice. Like, very good textures and that with the wood in that. Then you've got the rope, you've got the bucket in that. It's got the whole shabam together. So, overall, nice little quality mod. Has the functionality and use to it. But, anyways, that is the old well by Barney. Next. Now for the big black shed. This is by Futso. 2.09 megabytes to download. Five slots on console. And yep, what this is, is essentially a little shed in that. Nothing to no shout home about, at the end of the day, it's a very simple shed. However, it is well done, I think, personally. No, like, multicolor, 21 different colors. So that's what it does on the tin. It's a shed, it's a 15 by 12 meters. Price is 15,000 daily maintenance of seven. So yeah, you'll find this under sheds. And there we go. 15 grand to purchase. Yeah, see, no colours or anything like that. So it uses store machinery, pallets and bells. See what I got here is a class, I think it's a 9 for a 960, whatever, terror track, a large tractor, so you can fair fit a fair few tractors in that. So I'm thinking like to back to back in that. So like one, two tractors maybe. And then like, over here you can have some like implements, baders. Plows, whatever, or even yeah, just sack your bells and that, you know, get your tail hander and that, or skiss here. I think something like this with like quite how low slung the roof is. I'll say it's low, and that's a ma massive tractor in real life, but in terms of FS22 perspective, it is a small height wise, I think. But yeah, the it does the job, also works, no lights or anything like that. But, anyways, that is the big black shed by Futso. Next. Now for the open hall set. This is by Renter Renter Modding. 16.92 megabytes to download. Terms with slot counts, these are seven slots each, and this is a pack of three sheds. They all look very similar. The only difference is the angle and position of the roof end bits. But mainly it's the partition here between where you can potentially store your grain and where you can store your equipment. So this one is pretty much open. Go across, you can see it's clearly divided. And then for the third one, it's somewhere in between. So you find this under buildings, under sheds, scroll across to the end. And these are all 35 grand each, and that's a good thing. There's no like, difference or anything like that. There is like, no like, unique color options, so no 21 different colors in that. And it is a simple shed, 35 grand, daily maintenance of five. I saw your machines or crops in here. So things like, say, your storing machines over here, as I've done, once again, showing off where you can store. You can't quite fit a large combine. I did try to put our large, um, basic case like 250 equivalent, whatever, combine. It couldn't like, clear through the roof and that, but, you know, like, large tractors and that. It is very close to the height, boy, so it depends on what mod you're using, what equipment, as well as the hitbox collisions may have an impact on what you can actually use here. But yeah, overall, 
Not too bad. I love the sort of like, realistic, very high detail to, like, to the wood and that. You know, got the joints and that, the plates and that. And for someone who used to put roof trusses together for a living, I'd say that's a very good job done. And if we go across, it's going to be the exact same store now. There's no lights or anything like that. There's no like, open doors that like, halfway through. It's what you see is what you get. Drive in, drive out. One way. Or with this, technically you've got a small tractor that you can do a little loop de loop around. But yeah, so let's go and get a trailer now of some props and sort of show how you put it into here. So there we go, got some grain, so 90,000 litres of wheat. So first test is, can I actually clear the shed? Yes, you can. I'm using a very simple one here as well, so I'll see some potential issues with, you know, clearance. Yeah. Yeah, game is not liking that. Uh, not a bit, so maybe a smaller trailer because what I was using is TARDIS, which is equivalent to this, so maybe without the extension, so a small trailer in that. Or maybe something like, oh, which one is it? Ah, yeah, the Strout Man. Use that one where it has like a rolled in deck and that. That may be a better option than that. Or another alternative option is uh, stuck. Yeah, as I say, another alternative is something with like a belt system. So if you use this to store grains now or like with sheds in general, personally, I recommend if I've got installed. No, I don't. But what it is, is like the quantum version of. Yeah, so basically, it's like these that together and that. So the. Grimmy SL822. No, it's yeah, it's that one, but it's like a mod version. Highly recommend that one. Or if you use like the Lizard SR10 in that, or S10. Use that, connect it up, get a conveyor system going. And yeah, get creative. There's many ways belts and augers that you could use for that. But anyways, as for what we're looking at at the moment, this is the open hall shed by Rentner Modding. Overall, decent bit of equipment, but now let's go on to our production. Now for the liquid fertilizer and herbicide production. This is by DS Power, 5.0 mega stamina load, slot count is 20 goes down to 1. And what this is, is in the name, where you get liquid fertilizer and herbicide used by simply adding water and either nutrient salt or weed free. So. This is 3,000 to purchase, but if you go into, I think it's under big bags and that, and yeah, you can get the actual key ingredient, so it's not under there. It must be under pallets or something, because it comes in little containers and that. There we go, so yeah, you got your nutrient salt and your weed free, so the nutrient salt is for your liquid fertilizer, and the weed free is your herbicide, so 1,000 for 500 liters, that may seem like a lot. However, look at that recipe in that. It's literally a hundred litres, sorry, a thousand litres of water and ten litres of wheat free or nutrient salt. So that is enough for get one pallet or big bag, whatever, or wheat free or nutrient salt. That is what, 50? So all you need is five of those for one month. They are very small because they do look like this. See, these are really tiny, these are. Liftable as you expect, but yeah, these are very tiny in that, so just a little thing to note. In terms of like the fruit put in that, it's absolutely incredible because, again, doing the math, 240 circles per month, that is a potential of 240,000 litres of herbicides and liquid fertilizer a month. And compared to, there's many productions that I can have either fertilizer or the herbicides as its own entity in terms of production. I think this is, in my opinion, this is going to be the best one to us with not only throughput, but also cost effectiveness. So for a month in that, so we need, what, 50 of the wheat freeze in that, because we need a 1,000, no, sorry, 2,400 litres a month. Each of those little containers is a 1,000 for 500 litres, so... Yeah, five of those, that's five grand, and you get 240,000 litres of fertilizer and herbicide. So, in terms of prices and that, 
I think if you don't want to use this as was intended for, to you know, make herbicides as well as fertilizer for the farm, you can use this to make a shit ton of money, basically, and what I'm saying is so. For example, the fertilizer, yes, I'm on easy economy, but 3,600, 3,500 for a thousand litres. And how much did that cost us to purchase or make in total? What? Water is technically free, and for a thousand litres, all you need is a 10 litres of that wheat free, so a fifth of it. Yeah, a fifth of it, or something like that, or 20 or 40, whatever it is. What I'm saying is basically, it is absolutely foundational in terms of a good money making strategy that you can make absolute millions with this. But anyway, so let's go into your productions where you'll find this. There are no cell points or anything like that, just so you know. But yeah, go across, and it's one of these over here. There we go, 40,000 to buy, but trust me, that is worth doing. Because if you can get 240,000 years of herbicide or liquid fertilizer a month, that's what, six, 720 grand in a month in that? And for what, spending five grand on some little containers in that? Absolute go for it, and you can have a couple of these down, and yeah, you can actually make a bang load of money. So if I go into our cloth here, because yeah, you can fill this up in that, so there's no pallets or anything that spawns. As you can see under our productions tab, we got 21,000 litres at the moment, so shut off again, 21,500 litres. So just back this up. There we go. So yeah, you can take the water out if you wish. Actually, I've got an idea. So let's unload the herbicides. Decent unload rate in that. Unrate uh, that. So do I have this installed? Yes, I do. If I put that down, can we get basically free water? Yes, we can. So. What I just placed down was the, so under site extensions, is the automatic water for animals and greenhouses. So yeah, just have a quick look, so yeah, this is by Drago Dim, Drago Dim, so that is J-O-G-A, and Dim, D-I-M. But yeah, also a bit of kit that is, that's used for greenhouses and that, and as it turns out, use it for productions, like this kind of production, which ain't always a guarantee. But anyways, now time to close and detail. I gotta say, this is well done. You know, how it all looks in that. Put your little cage container in that. And oh, I did not realise that. So you can actually open the door. So we do get these little containers in that. You can just store them in here. So that is actually nice. Does make it a bit of a ruckus when it is going, so. But yeah, that is an awesome production. So, with the free water in that, don't have to worry about that. But yeah, just add the wee free and salt nutrients. So, walk back a bit, and yeah, that is absolute incredible. So. That is the liquid fertilizer herbicide production by DS Power. Next. Moving on to our equipment, we're starting off with something a bit unique and different. This is the Lizard RT2000 and Big Bags. This is by Giant FS. 5.97 megabytes to download. And what this is, so it's not including the trailer, I just pour off sort of a showcase in. So what it includes is a Basically, a little lift hook in that, three big bags in that. And with this, it does come with three big bag options. So you've got your seeds, fertilizer, and a free fill bag that you can use to pretty much fit anything you want. As you can see, these do weigh 300 kilograms, so you cannot lift these. So, yeah, under tools and miscellaneous, where you find the ART 2000. Got different tire options in that. So, lizard, standard. Standard 2, Continental, Midas, Back to Lizard. 
under sticker, she got design one, design two, so it removes the top bit, design three removes the bottom but keeps the top, or none. Main colour, so apart from your basic colour palette, you got a custom blue, dark blue, red, dark red, old red, green, old green, yellow, old yellow, orange, but no but no old orange. Grey, matte black, just normal black, and then I think that's where it ends. Yeah, so yeah, it ends there. It does. Ah, yeah. So sticker options. So if you do have your stickers, that will they come up as? And then also you've got your rim colours. So if I change that back and then make that a nice hot pink, and there you go. And for the big bags and that, so. Uh, of course it'll be under big bags, scroll across and that, so as I mentioned you got your seeds and soil fertilizer and £500 for a thousand years, that is very cheap, especially for the fertilizer net. And then you got your rechargeable bag which is pretty much filled with anything that can go down, so your crop type, seeds, all your seed add-on stuff, it's uh, funny enough. As well as the premium expansion stuff, and yeah, so as pig food and TMR and that, so that's quite a versatile list. So, how this works is you hook up to this hook lift. One thing to note is there's no swinging left to right with the boob arm, so that is a downside to this. Oh, did not mean for that. I was meant to detach that. Yeah, open or help window. So L1, right stick up and down, raises and lowers the arm. And then R1, right stick left to right, brings in and brings out that extended boom. So yeah, lower it down. So as you can see, we've got grapes. So yeah, well, what's the purpose of this? I'm thinking like the rechargeable bags is a bit of a freedom of what you want to do now. So. But yeah, in terms of how you use this net, so for example, imagine this was a bag of fertilizer net, so I'll line this up for a train net to transport. There we go, just move it across. It is a bit subjective now with the wheels and that and the axle, so just a little thing to note. And then yeah, there we go. And detach. And there we go, so there's no like tension straps, it's literally manually attached. And once it's attached, you can actually see like the strings of the bags you know hooking on. So that is actually something rather nice. So there we go. Drop that. And yeah, it's exactly the same for the seed and for the stuff, so if I get this lined up. I think if I do it from in cab, it'll be a hell of a lot easier. And actually, it is to be fair. So there we go. Hooked on to the fertilizer, I think it is. No, sorry, seeds. No, it is a fertilizer. Sorry. <laughs> I saw the seed icon. I thought that was seed. So yeah, lift the bag up. And yeah, even like with the boom out, so there's no risk of tipping that. So that's with the solid fertilizer so that's one of the heaviest items you can put in besides from the likes of lime and stones I think definitely lime I think stones weigh more than solid fertilizer but I'm not sure however back onto the actual mod review itself I see yeah I see this as a bit of a nice kit in that I wish personally if this was like swingable you know the F to right but besides from that, that's the only thing I would recommend in that. I'm sure we've got, maybe got something like that on the mod hub, I do not know. It's not something I use, but something I actually like in that, so... Nice bit of kit. But anyways, that is the Lizard ART 2000 and Big Bags by Giant FS. Next. Now for the Lizard Utility Trader Pack, this is by Solutions Modding. 9.35 megabytes to download, slot count is 4 for each of these individual items, so you've got a selection of three traders designed for basically it's utility, so utility, so things like mowers, 
bit of implements, maybe even just like bells that frighten the larger ones than that. I'm sure you can find many creative ways with using this. But first of all, you'll find this under tools, under the looters. As I mentioned, there is four slots goes down to one. Price is price is three and a half, six and a half, and eight and a half grand respectively. Configurations are exactly the same, so I'm go with the biggest one. So start off with your wheels. Standard, standard two, standard three, and back to standard. Main color, so you got a whole selection of colors, including like most purple in that. So main color, that will change the ramp and the main chassis body in that. Design color, let's go for a red. That is for the flared arches. Design color is going to be the flooring by the looks of it. And then that's the, you got your room colors. But yeah, so nice to be a kit. One problem I do have with this is when you detach it, you know, you got your little chocks in that. That's meant to not to move. However, as you can see, how it will is spinning. And if you just casually little bump it in that, so that will not spinning. But let me just demonstrate so. Usually with a lot of things in FS, when you detach something, it has a very firm like, resistance of bumping. However, look at that speedo. I'll try to keep this like at one or two miles an hour. So there we go. I fucked it. Detached. And yeah, just casually little bump. It is very easy to move. And if you do, let's say, all actually beep into it, there it goes off its merry way. And I say that's a problem, but in fact, that is real life. That's how something like that would work. You know, the tops will come off, they snap off, or something. Something will snap and break if you bump a massive five ton tractor into this. But again, I'm just talking about in terms of FS perspective and stand. Well, not say standards, but how we come accustomed to a lot of things, but see, I think I'll take it back in terms of it being a problem. I don't think it's a problem as such. Again, it's just how you come to use of it. So, what I want to do is test to see what you can actually fit onto here. So, things like quads and that, yes. And I think as well, you may fit like the John Deere UTV and that. So, also, do you have some options so press L1 and circle that will unload sorry lower and raise the load loader then press L1 and left on the d-pad that will drop the ramps on the side so you can like load stuff on from the side but yeah things like the quads SUVs I think not SUVs up like ATVs and that and all sorts of other stuff so and yeah, that's the L1 and right stick up and down does that. And then L1, L1, sorry, L1, R1, right stick up and down. Tilts that, so. Actually, that I quite like. Also, you do have tension belts, so. Let's go and grab our war tanker here, so. No, don't bloody indicators on. So there we go, we're driving forwards. May not be the most smoothest, so bear with me, so there we go. Loading on. So yeah, UTV's on. The trailer on. And not as such, so yeah, can't really fit a trailer in that. But I'm sure I can find a creative way for this, so just scoot on. Engine off. Now what I want to do is close the cover and then gently raise that up. Not nothing stupid amount. Put tension straps down. Oh, okay, <laughs> didn't mean to do that, but there we go. So yeah. There we go. A bit more realistic in that, so now you've got your tailgate flap up in that. No, I won't go to you. But yeah, see, we are loaded up. 
But yeah, I have seen photos of this basically with the John Deere ATV that one I'm using at the moment. Along with things like a quad and scramblers and that, so that's what they're designed for. That's what I think as well. With that decking on the back, you can load pretty much other things like with race tracks maybe. Definitely the motorcycles that you can load on because of that ramp. And yeah, I know I have reused this a lot lately, but we'll see how this performs in that, you know, with the hill climb. So, this is our gradual 45 degree slope hill climb. Sander tractor in that. In terms of weight, not a problem. Nice to distribute it. And if you undo the tension straps. Yeah, actually, if I undo the tension straps, it doesn't really budge as such. But yeah, so reverse, accelerate, bit of sipping. So that comes to the tractor itself. Ah, right, another one. There we go. Shit. Still going, still going. It is still going. <laughs> oh, still going. And there we go. It's finally stopped. So, another one that has very loose in terms with, you know, no parking brake equipment or no parking anchor in that. So, just a little thing to note in that. But, anyways, that was the Lizard Utility Trader Pack by Sushis Modding. Overall, final thoughts, cracking mods. Yeah, the little braking issues, maybe a little small update will fix that, I'm not sure. But anyways, on to our next mod. And into the field for our final equipment for the day, we got the Lizard SR800 Stone Wind Rover. This is by Barso ME3, 4.13 megabytes to download. Slot count is free, goes down to 1. And what this is, it's a, basically it's a stone picker. That can let you pick up small and medium rocks, then put them into a nice little swath. So, unfortunately, I don't have the best sample to test. So, warn the track drop a sec. Yeah, what I'm saying is, yeah, this map is broken. I am going to have a new test map coming up soon or be made soon. But, anyways, for the time being, on the same pickers, 4,000 to buy, working speed of 4 miles an hour, 2.5 meter working width. Requires 20 horsepower and weighs 627 kilograms. So in store under configurations, all you got is to change colour. So you can change colour from green, green new, so a bit more of a fleur green, a slightly darker green, and then yeah, you got your older greens. So yeah, only green and nothing else. So yeah, we're in the field, and this is a handy bit of kit again. So the best field for it because I can't get stones up. I've ploughed, I've redrilled and harvested and for every reason I cannot get stones in that so I'm not sure so but yeah raise and lower you can turn on the stone picker and then elbow on right stick left to right you can change the position of it and yeah L1 R1 can set to unload here so I'm going to leave that on so unload turn on and then as we go along we're going to be picking up a couple of stones and I see we are offloading and actually what I want to do is leave that like, turn the unloading off because I want to just now click a sample on that so but yeah also you do get that cold base state afterwards as you do with any old rock picker but yeah, what this does, it basically just puts all your stones into a nice, neat swath. It can do large stones, but small and medium stones that you can typically re-roll in with a roller. You can pick them up. Yeah, let's get this little pile over here and that. And then, we'll offload. There we go, so yeah, a nice little pile. And what that does, it creates little swath piles. So then you can come around with a bucket or, yeah, I think you can do it with a forest wagon, but I can bucket in that, pick us up, and then, yeah, either offload into a trailer and sell, or put into a rock crusher in that. So you turn it off, 
So yeah, overall, nice little bit of neat kit. And that's something unique and different. Like, we don't really see many rock picks now in terms of if you know as some mods and that. Oliver is going to be a case of, it's basically based off the Elho Scorpio. Maybe a bucket in that. But yeah, this is definitely something out there and different. Nice little mod I recommend. But anyway, that is the Lizard SRW 800 Stone Wind Rover by Bartso MV3. Next. On to our vehicle, starting off with the 180.0. This is by Owner Emery, 70.08 MW stamina. He did also release the branded version, and the branded version is a rubber. But obviously, because rubber ain't a licensed brand, we get the Lizard version of this. But anyway, so. First of all, you find this under medium tractors. And slot count is 14 goes down to 1. So there we go. Knights having a half grand. 50 mile an hour top speed, so not a very speedy tractor. 400 litres of fuel, 108 horsepower, weighs 11.3 tonnes. So yeah, so you've got wheel set. First of all, you've got standard. Twin wheels, narrows, and back to standard. Design, got design 1. Two and three, so just little logos on the front. So, obviously, with the rubber version, the PC version, you'll have the rubber logo. But yeah, you've got this is a farming and then man or none. Attacher, it's got three point or standard, so that's for the front. You still got your pin hook on the front. On the rear, you do have your pin hook as well as your normal three point linkage. Color, still to change the main body, so let's pick a red. But yeah, that won't change the three points, so just a thing to note. But yeah, you got standard, yellow, blue, red, we just looked at, and two different shades of green. And then marine colours, you got standard, red, black, and that's it. Thought there was another shade of black there, but nope. But yeah, hop into it. So overall, not too bad. Got a little door in there, so. Let's turn this baby on. But yeah, also you can see we've got steering, so we've got front wheel steering, crab steering left, crab steering right, all wheel steering, so that is nice to have. And that is it. So horn, lights inside the cab, so that turns those lights on, got lights on the gauges and that. Outside, indicator left. Right, brake lights. Oh, nope, sorry. <laughs> brake lights. Um, there seems to be no brake lights. But yeah, let's go off away. I should just turn the lights off a sec. So, with the all-wheel steering, handles pretty well. Oh, yeah, 108 horsepower for a hundred grand almost. May not be the most valuable tractor in terms of what you can have potentially, but I'll say this is a good little cracking tractor now. So yeah, it's simple transmission, so it's either drive, neutral or reverse. So yeah, no mess around with changing gears and that. Front was steering. Yeah, definitely a bit heavier. And crab steering. That's basically all we'll see in, just with the crab in. And the same with the right. But yeah, I like the like, stack snap, the exhaust snap. That is nice, so... I'm thinking, let's go and get hooked up to something, so... I know, let's get a drill out, so 108 horsepower. There we go. So, right, first test we got here is a plow. 160 horsepower requirement, so I'm not going to do our grain fill, that's going to be safe for the green stuff in a bit, so let's go to our cotton field, drop down the plow, and yeah, no issues I don't think, I'm waiting that plow in, I thought I would plow straight over in that, but... Great fields and that, so oh, wait a minute. Why are you not going to the ground? What the heck is going on? There we go. 
you know, plowing now, just for some reason, it's not letting me do the cotton field, really. Does it if I swing it left to right, but... Oh, again, I don't know what's going on with my test map here. Is that a bug with the equipment or something else? Let's rotate the plow, because yeah, this is a base game plow this is, so... Should work just fine, but... Maybe it's for, like, there we go. Now it's working. Oh, that spoke too soon. But yeah, once you get up speed, it's just, yeah, not working, so... Let's try a disc arrow now. So, I right, got our disc arrow. 180 horsepower requirement, so this is the limit for the tractor, so... Terms with terms with working speed. That miles an hour does it just fine. So no issues with this. Yeah, I don't know what happened with that plow and that. Maybe it's, again the plow is base game that, so it's not even a mod. So I'm not too sure of that. Maybe it's more suitable for like subsoilers and that, rather than you know your normal plows like that. Get to a bit of a bumpy ground. So yeah, it does slow down, so... Okay, we are at the limit for this, so... Yeah, it seems the tractor has got a lot of horsepower, but... It's just a bit of a medium-large tractor, but... With just a small engine. But indeed, does the job. Can't really say much else about it. So that is the... 180.0 by Onar Emery. Next. Now for the Zeta pack, this is by Wolflex Modding and Rolnik410, 53.31 megabytes to download. In terms with slot counts, it is 22, 21 and 21 slots, so we'll go over that in a sec. So yeah, this is a pack of small Zetra tractors, so it also does come with a front loader as well. So the front loader is 4 slots. So yeah, you got your Zeta Proxima. 76 to 170 horsepower. Then you got your Forterra HSX, 96 to 136 horsepower. And then yeah, same one again, but it's about the smaller engine. So I'm not sure why that is, but I'm not complaining. But yeah, configurations are the same for all these. So I'm gonna go over the largest of the lot. So you got your 120, 130, and 140 engine. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, the difference is just the engine size. But yeah, same six, wait a minute, so if I want 136 horsepower, go with that one. But if I want 136, that's 99 grand, so I'm not sure why that is. Again, maybe just the model now. I think, it, yeah, it's the model with the scoop and that, the lights. I think that's why, I think it's a bit more of a newer model, I think. But anyways. Engine, so Will Brand's got Trailborg, Standard, Weights, Wides, Wides with Weights, Narrows, Rear Twin Narrows, Rear Twins, Twins all the way around. And yeah, pretty much standard tires and that, nothing to shout about. Yeah, no rice tires or anything like that. Accessories, no or yes, so that's your forestry cage and protection. Attacher, you got Attacher. Front weight, three point, or just the attacher. Now for your front loader, so yeah, got no Zator, Hoyer, or none. So the Zator does come with this mod pack. Main cutter, so go to main cutters. Got reds, greys, different shade of reds, like orangey reds. Cream, white. Ivory or black room colors, same again. Yeah, not sure why. When I go with red, if I then go with thing, yeah, red one, red two. Actually, are they the same? So, yeah, red one that is exactly the same, right? So yeah, not sure why that is there. That may need a small update. But yeah, it got your slightly weathered. White, ivory, and black. 
and then you have three front loader, go to tools, front loaders, go towards the end, there you go. So you've got two different options, both of them are four slots, it's just basically the horsepower size, so one is 80, one is 100, so the smaller one is again for the smaller of the bunch, and the 100 is for these ones over here. But yeah, let's have a look at them in the flesh, so... We've got the 130 here, so... In the cab. Lights. Not too bad. Indicators. Actually, it's detached out a sec. So yeah, this is the largest one of the lot. And also, we've got extended arms, so... R1, right stick left to right. That does the mirror. So, so that does that. So R1, right stick up and down, does the panoramic roof. And then left to right does the rear window. I thought it did a mirror, but no it doesn't. Turn off the indicator. L1, nothing. L1, R1. Right stick left to right does that. And up and down with the right stick does the right door, so... Actually, I do like that. It's one of the clicking animations. That is actually rather nice. Oh, yeah, it's got all different like, low ranges, high range gearbox, so... May not be the most useful if you've got automatic transmission. But, yeah, it goes into low, high range and that. That I do like. But yeah, overall, I've got automatic gears I have, and yeah, even though there's potentially some issues with automatic, potentially when you're using implements and equipment and that, on its own, doesn't seem to be that bad. And I go to the more powerful one, with you know, all the forestry cage and that. So yeah, it allows you your front loader self controls there. But yeah, that is it. Lights again. Not, not too bad. Like, I do like the like not ivory, like the beige white, whatever this is called. That I do like. I know you get your zeta red in that. But also this front loader can go with the normal zeta, I think. So not not that one, but I think we've got a base game zeta we have. No, not that one. There we go, this one here. See, so yeah, horse quickly. Not horse quickly. But yeah, I think that does. Actually, I think the only difference is to the basic one is the horsepower ranges and the animation. Apart from that, I can't really see too much of a difference to the base game, personally. But yeah, it says added weights, hook configurations, added color configurations. New engine versions, new loaders, yep, open doors, colours, and then the forestry protection. But apart from that, not much difference to the base game. At the end of the day, it depends on what your preference is. But yeah, the gap and go nat is a bit sluggish in that, but once you're into gears and that, shift in, it does pull quite well. But yeah, apart from that, not much else to say. But yeah, in terms of slot count, so when I said 22, 21 and 21, it is 22 for this one, no sorry, 22 for the small one, and then 21 for the larger ones here, so usually I'll be the other way around, but it is what it is, isn't And yeah, I want to go into the small one of the bunch, so I think that's the small one, yeah, this is the small one. Oh yeah, so yeah, same configurations as that, like same openings, same transmission by the looks of it. But yeah, it's just different size and really there's not much else to shout about. At the end of the day, it's what it is. Yeah, a bit of a, I don't say a letdown, but it doesn't really amaze me, but I appreciate the mods anyway. So this is the Zetra Pack by Wolfex Modding at Ronick410. 
next. On to our penultimate model of the day, we've got the Lizard F10 series by Holtz FS and Macrono FS. 84.69 megabytes of download, so a bit of a hefty size, but trust me, it is worth it. And I think, if I'm not correct, if I sound correct, these it's basically the Fords, but as it is a brand, since we didn't have Fords, unfortunately, as a brand in FS, we're stuck with the Lizard versions and that. But anyway, so we've got a pack of four tractors along with front loaders and that, and some implements and that, so this is a nice little bunch, so first of all the tractors, so you'll find these under small tractors, and then from left to right you've got your 6610 4x2, so two wheel drive, the four wheel drive version, the 7810, and then the 6600 or 6600, yeah no that would be 6600, Oh yeah, different engine sizes and that. So the 4x4 and 4x2 is actually the same. And 6600 is just basically a baby version of the 6610. It looks something a bit more powerful than the 7810 is your way to go. Configurations are pretty much the same all the way around. Apart from the horsepower and the engines, that's really different. So operator platform got standard, on in. All in with light, cabin, and back to standard. So yeah, with standard you do have the option for your battery location, so standard you can't receive the battery, but with design one, you can see the battery just there. So actually know the battery is like in the engine, so you can have a battery on the outside or on the inside. Headlights, standard, design one, or back to standard, so you got a little pops in that. But yeah, back up to the top, engine, got your 7810 Turbo Plus wheel brands. I'm not sure what these are, like the wheel brands. I know perhaps Firestones and that maybe, but it's a non-licensed brand. But regardless, in terms of wheel setup, this is where it gets a bit nice. So you've got standard, it's like one, so a bit of wide, and back to standard. But if you go with this one, this one you can get your cage wheels, your auxiliary wheels, and then you get your duallys at the rear, and yeah, just a whole different shabam of tyres and that. And for the baby one, off the lot, again, configurations are exactly the same, as I mentioned. You've got your exhaust and that, that's a bit different. And with a lot of these, these do come with difference in weight, so Additional weights at the back, so that is for the wheels. Battery location, panel protection can. So what is that for? Is that for the size? I think. Yeah, that's for the, the side there, for the steering column. And then your filter height, so that's going to be your L filter at the front. So you have like normal or like proper low. Attachers with or without hydraulic control. And then your yeah, front loader, yes or no. So this is a bit of a unique thing. So we'll have a look at that in a sec. But yeah, in terms of color, so chassis color. So this is basically your front loader and that. So yeah, it's blue or black, or do you get the yellow for the front loader? And I think also for the rear weight, not the rear weight. I know that that's for your implement. So. Reduction color. What's that for? Ah, that's, that's the little spokes on the wheels. Not spokes, on uh, the lug nuts. Then you got your front grille, so go across the front. So grey or black. If I get rid of the. Uh, what's it? No, not that. So. Front loader, that was all I was looking for and that, so yeah, sorry, it's been a long day. But anyway, so rear weight, so this is going to be the weights at the back. Different whites, silver, then black. And then ring colour, you can use that to match. And to be fair, that does look quite sick, so... Once you have the front loader, go to your combination, so front loaders. And this is when you get your front loader, the L600. And then you got the version, so the 6610 or 6600. And then for the 7810, 
colours. You've got the blue, yellow or black. And then I think it's under front loader equipment. This is where I have your implements. So you've got your same rakes, universal bucket, winches, front blade, implement adapter. One thing I will say, I've got the winch. But as you can see, it does not show up. So I think that may be a bit broken in that. But yeah, also slot counts. I forgot to go over in that. So for the 6610 4x2, that is 21 slots. Goes down to 1. For the 4x4, it is 20 slots. For the 7810, that is 21 slots. And then for the 6600, that is 20 slots. Goes down to 1 for all of these, as you can see. And yeah, the front loader, that is... Got down in my notes. Uh, three slots. No, sorry, four slots for the front loader. And then for the implements, it is two, two, two all the way across. And then three slots for the adapter. So it says on the top right, can be used for the implements. That's not capable for the L600 model. So basically, what it is, says so if I want to use any of these, for example, you'll need the adapter. Otherwise, the front loader can go onto the front blade, winch, and then the use for a bucket and stone rake. So, stone rake is pretty simple, rakes up stones in that. Universe bucket, you need to pick up stuff in that. Winch, I do not know. Front blade, this is interesting, so you can use the open field, so basically a plow, and it also cut trees with. And then you also got your like normal like size level in that, so. I'm going to the 6610 4x2. Nice warrant that. Going to the cabinet. Lights. Like no indicators or nothing like that. But yeah, this is a very simple four tractor this is. I've got the indicators on, but. Yeah, get that indicator sound, but nothing's coming through, but... Oh, I don't know, no idea. But yeah, also you do have a cover, cover option. So L1, left on the D-pad, opens the engine cover, so... Expect the engine, and that's where your battery is. Close you up. And that is just a nice... It gets them go quite well, to be fair, in that. But yeah, so go across, I'll show off the implements to sex so sort of see that's how it looks with the front loader that in person. But yeah, so with six six hundred and that. So yeah, use this to attach pretty much any of these implements, so there we go, you can attach the bucket, to the bucket. So, there we go, detach the, there we go, but yeah, so I've got the not stone brake, but yeah, I'll show off the front blade here, so, yeah, for this, I can use to like, create fields, I think, so lower, there we go, yeah, there we go. I'm creating a field. That is very peculiar. Yeah, just need to like flush to the ground. But yeah, can this there be used for silage and that? No. No, that will remove it. So you can't get the silage leveler and one of this. But yeah, it says it can cut trees, so what does it mean by cutting trees? So if I go to my log pile. Can I cut these? Yeah. Is it cutting it? No, I'm not sure, but... Nope, it's not doing anything like that. Maybe if I go to our trees over here... I'll have a little look at the trees now. So, there we go. On its own, does nothing. 
I turn on, turn on and lower. Oh, there we go. Where proper dice is up. And timber. And now we're stuck. No, not, not quite stuck, but uh, that's something a bit different. So, there we go. Once again, if I show this off once, there we go. That's the tree top down. Technically, but that's actually quite nice, actually. And then, yeah, great feel in that. There you go. Yep, chop up our dogs in that. That is actually rather unique, that is. I should want to know something. If I say, turn you on here, can I grab a log and get us cut in half? So. It'll trim it, but... Yeah, it'll just, it'll just trim it, and that's it. Can't really cut it in half, but... If you want to remove the logs and that, you know, just grab it. And there you go. Flip it vertical. Hey! <laughs> that's actually quite nice. That is actually rather nice indeed, so nice little bit of kit, and again, I'll just get a bit of an all for it. And yeah, back to the four and that. And this is the most powerful one with the turbo net, so got the exhaust rebuilds and that, and that's actually quite nice, you know. Open cabinet. Definitely a very interesting indeed. Wait, if I go back to the 6610 and that, so if I drop you off, there we go. Go to our stone rate, because bucket is in its name now. But yeah, grab that. And then yeah, turn it on, or lower it, turn on. And yeah, we can use that to create fields as well. Turn it off and that. I'm still you know, creating fills and that, so that's actually quite interesting, actually. But yeah, so lift it up. No, sorry, lift it up. And we head into our very small stone field. Yep, some stones left. So there we go, into the fields, stone raking that. What does it, what does it do to the stones? Um, Honestly, I'm not sure. Does it pick it up or what? I think it just, you know, like, smooths the stone out, I think. Does it? Yeah, there's no option to offload in that, so... Must be an issue just clear all the stones up in that, interestingly. So, if you've got like, a pile of stone in that, or... What about a pile of, like, just anything in general, so... Bear with me a sec. Uh, no, so that moved the stones, that's just the ploughing. Once you lower it, that's the ploughing, that's nothing else. So, a bit peculiar, am I doing this wrong? I'm not sure. Like, yeah, stone rake. Yeah, it says stone rake, so I'm assuming that has something to do with stone picking. I think it's just a basic another form of ploughing that, I think. Get it done right, get it just lift enough. And you create fills at eight miles an hour. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, it is what it is, but I actually like that. I like the four tractor itself and that without the implements. If I was gonna use this, I perhaps won't use the implements personally that. But at the end of the day, that is just me, so if I just go and go back to small tractors, go across again, and just simply here we go, 7010. And all the cleaners. There we go. Just something like this, something simple in that. This is what I'll use on my farm in that, for you know, as a pulling tractor now, like a yard tractor in that. Love the engine sounds, the lights in that, just everything about it is absolutely beautiful. Like me, I am waffling on long enough. So that is the 
Lizard F10 Series, i.e. Ford F10 Series by Holtz FS at Macroni FS. And now for our final mod of the day. And for our final mod of the day, finally we've got the Gleaner S9 Series. This is by Sid Modin. 66.32 megabytes of damn load. Get slot counts out of the way. For the Harvester, it is 12 slots. For the individual headers, you've got two Dynaflexes, a 9250 and a 9255. Individually, they are 12 slots each. Only difference between the two, I think it's just like the air hoses and that, but we'll give those a little test. But yeah, we have been waiting for this for what? Six months? A year? I know DJ Graham did a showcase for this, what, in sort of August and that, so two months ago? But yeah, I think it's been going on for what? Six months? A year at least? When we first heard that Gleaner as a brand is coming to FS22, but finally it's here by Sid Modin. About time, but barely never. So yeah, for the Harvester Net, you'll find it under Harvesters, obviously. 301,500 to buy, 871 liters of fuel, top speed of 18 miles an hour, 30,743 liters, and weighs 18.1 tons. And as I mentioned, 25 slots goes down to two. So yeah, base price is 301,500. However, as soon as you go in, it is 304,000 because of the twin wheels. But yeah, we'll go over those in a sec. Engine wise, you've got the S96, which gives you 322 horsepower, 375 for the S97 engine, and finally, for the S98 engine, that gives you 430 horsepower. But yeah, variable transmission, interesting one to use for fuel, and if you're on PC, 93 litres of DEF, diesel exhaust fluid. Wheel brand's got your typical ones. And the only difference is we use the tracks and that, so... It's going to be pretty standard for all, so starting off with is the Twins. Then you got Twins 2, so that is a slightly chunkier tyre. More of a tyre list off the rim. Standard. Ah, so yeah, standard is the base price. Don't know why automatic gives you this wider ones but anyways white tires cruel tracks which look sick but yeah up for those the chunkier rears and that cruel too this will be something i'm hoping to have on my racks to riches series very soon manufacturing year so this is going to be the decal so before 2023 or after 2023 personally i like both of them are nice but i do like before. Yeah, that red stripe. I'm a sucker for it. I'm into that. Anyways, on two ladders. This is where you hop into the combine. Got rotating or lifting ladder. The lifting ladder is an additional two grand. Flags, you got three. None. USA, Canada, and Australia, where these are commonly used. Numbers, one to ten. So you can have a fleet of Technically 11 of these have none, then 1 to 10. Screens is going to be in the cab on your right hand side. Got none. A little tablet. Additional screen. Screen and tablet. And back to none. CB radio, yes or no. So a little antenna comes out. GPS. I cannot find the location for this. I do apologize on that. But there's like no like, module that pops up or anything like that, but it got a real GPS system, which is all that matters. At the rear, got a hitch, no or yes. So that means you can tow a header trailer, which is needed, because these headers are 12 meters long. Again, depends on what map you're using that. But anyway, so, go towards the end. Got your Dynaflexes, 40 footers, so, 17 and a half grand for the 9255, which is in line with the base game prices. However, if you want something a bit cheaper, go with this one, the 9250, 25 grand cheaper, and we'll give it a test to see if there's actually any difference between the two. But if you want to, for the same price, you can go with a Titan Draper if you want to, 72,600. A bit more working with, a bit more speed. But yeah, it's not a gleaner, so it's down to you and your individual preference. But yeah, so I mentioned these were 12 slots, goes down to 1, so enough yabbing on. I got the 9288. 
with the Knight 255, so... There we go, so yeah, actually I'll show this off, so... Got your CB radio and all your screens. That I actually like. And if I hop into the other one... Sure, so I'm going to hop out of here and go into here manually. And yeah, this is like standard S96 without any of the screens and that. So you've got a little screen up there, dials and that, little clusters and that, so... Actually, that is loud. So I'm going to turn one off. But yeah, in the cabinet, you've got your cameras and that for the field, into your hopper and that. All the little gizmos and that. Ooh, very fancy. Man, look at all those buttons there, switches. Oh, that's going to be a bit overwhelming, so... Turn for controls, fold and unfold. And L1, L1, R1. So, right... So, what's that? L1, R1. Right stick, left, right. Unfolds the back end of it. Then up and down, does that. And right stick, up and down. What does that do? So... Ah, yeah, thought so. It's going to be the door, R1, right stick, and that. So I'm turning the engine off because it is quite loud. But yeah, hop up here. And that actually looks very good and very tidy now. Look at that beauty of an engine. And that is nice. Got your beacons as well. Actually, I like how this all comes together in that. That is some very good detail. Like all the wiring, the little individual gears, the belt system in that. This is a very high poly count. You can see just like all the individual work that goes into it, all the hoses and that, got your ACU filter and that at the back, I'm assuming. Is that a filter and that? It looks like a filter and that. But yeah, got your choppers and that, it's got your trailer hitch that you got enabled in the oh sorry, enabled in the configuration. Fuel tank that is protected. I mean just like look at this, this is very well detailed. And then you've just gone to the heroes themselves, like spikes on that. That is absolutely sick. Just like the detail, like just in awe of all that little fine details. And yep, yeah, it's very similar, pretty much exactly the same with the Night 250. I'm trying to find a difference. Beacons, how it attaches. Different kind of beacons, but I'm not too sure, so. Let's give this a little test run, shall we? So I've got a field of barley. There we go. So, lights in that. So you've got lights on the front. In the gear's left. Right. Got your beacons. Of course, I'm on that gen still, so... The beacons aren't going to be all that flashy. <coughs> but yeah, let's get harvesting. Oops, do you want me to smash it tonight? Ow, that is loud, that is. That is absolutely loud. I like about these like roller combines and that, you know, you've got all your gizmos and that. Unfortunately, we wish I had like a zooming camera on console so because they, they like focus. Like, for example, press, I oh know, like L3 and that, the analog stick and that. Just press it, zoom in, zoom out. I mean, that is just nice. So I'm going to tab over, eventually get to. Or other one. I will see how this performs in that. So, yeah, same header in that. I'm guessing maybe actually it's a horsepower requirement. The same. I did not look at that to be fair. So, Gleaner uh, does it say horsepower wise? Oh, helps you unfold in that. 
come on, unfold. Still does the job just fine. Get rid of that help me in a sec. I shall see, does that camera change? Does it change? Not sure if it's just me or sort of like flickering or something. I don't think that is just me that is, so that's probably enough for us with changing something, so yep again this is like the basic version. And even in cab, like it turns me up here and that that is absolutely loud. I'm not sure if it's just my headset now or with the volume a bit too high that. But compared to all the other ones we've looked at today. But yeah, this is just cruising along. Let's go back to this one because I want to see again try to figure out a difference in that so six miles an hour, yep. Exactly the same still now, so I can't find a difference between the headers and that. However, I'm just gonna turn that off a sec because No, I was gonna say in cap for this and speak because I want to get our draping header net and see how that performs, you know. Something like the Gleaner like this, this would be very good for like the Colossus Titan header net, so I think I left a header up here. So right, I just turned the volume on my bugle sense down, so hopefully you can hear me a bit better than that. See, so yeah, I've got the Draper, Titan Draper Unreal net. I think it's just the speed and it's still got an upper work of it, I think. Yep, so still a normal work with. Yep, so doing this at what, 15, 17 miles an hour? Not too bad, not too shabby. Maybe something like that. Harvesting at 15 miles an hour. Oops. That doesn't seem too bad, so. We got a, a cleaner grey in that, so I'm just moving away, so. We've got a bit of a. Yes, a gleaner grey, so I want to go into this, so can we change this to a colour? I think Harvest Moon Midnight Silver and that. But yeah, Class Grey. But yeah, something like that, the Harvest Moon Silver would be good. Dark Steel. Chrome is always an option. Aluminium or stainless steel, something like that. You know, oof, a bit too bright that is. But yeah, I'm thinking, like, again, I'm in my head, oh, like, it's supposed to be a mod for you. Keep it simple, because these videos do turn into what, an hour long? And I know that puts people off in that. Again, yeah, I get it, you know, an hour long video. Tempted to do individual videos and that, I may see how it goes down the road. But anyways, that was the Gleaner S9 series by Sid Modin, mod of the day, and I highly recommend this mod in that, so I think yeah, overall it's been a good day of mod, a gleaming day of new mods, got the Gleaner, we got a Ford and that, a Ford series of tractors from the, I think it was 1977 to 1991, like the different models and that, so Got a mixture of that, and yeah, some decent, good quality mods in that. Cannot fault that at all. So, I think I was going to leave it today, because it's getting late. Again, did get in from work till 6, because I'm a bit of a bus man crowd at the moment. And, yeah, setting up, testing and everything, and it's currently 10 o'clock. So, I'm going to get this edited and uploaded within, what, an hour and a half or so before I go to go bed. So, yeah, I'll get cracking on that, and I'll see you folks tomorrow for... Hopefully both a new Racks to Riches series and depending on how tomorrow goes as well or a new episode of Racks to Riches and hopefully the map tour because I will be doing the map tour this time. I know I said it before the last mod review but the well I'm not sure how to pronounce it Neanderthal Gnathal whatever crossplay by Iron Thunder and that so that seems an awesome map and that Canadian map. New crops and that got swapping textures and that so you can swap through crops square fields as well, or rectangular fields, perfect. What more can you ask for? So yeah, I'll get cracking on that tomorrow, Nat. 
or unless I don't sleep tonight or get it done tonight, so who knows to be honest, but anyways, as always, hope you enjoyed this mod review, if so, smash the like button, feel free to comment down below, if you will share some please be my guest, if you're not, subscribe to the channel yet, then please consider, but for you to do, hope you stay, but for now, it's be for every stream, and I'll see you all very soon. Man, I am losing my voice today. <laughs>